really good in their own right. But the strength of this ship, I think, is its flexibility with its incredibly long range, very high shell velocity guns that do really good damage. And you can see where the enemies spawn. We are playing that annoying playstyle. How annoying is it if you're a Des Moines trying to help your destroyers contest a cap and hold on to a cap when suddenly from your spawn <laughs> a DD starts opening up and firing it. It's lighting you on fire and trying to take you out. <laughs> it's certainly a good distraction and that's how I really love to play the Claver and some of these fast gunboat destroyers is the ultimate pest, the ultimate distraction. What are these people going to focus on? Are they going to focus on my teammates taking control of all of all of the capture zones? Or are they going to focus on the destroyer that's managed to get into their spawn and is farming them all out? <laughs> and oftentimes, people are going to choose to deal with the destroyer who's farming them from their spawn. They think, okay, well, let's deal with this DD first, and then we'll turn around and deal with the teammates who are taking over the caps. But what happens is, this Clubair is incredibly difficult to hit. Look at the speed we're going. Uh, yeah, nearly 55 knots, and with this decent rudder shift, currently I am actually running a slightly concealment build. If you wanted the ultimate pest to be ultra annoying at long range, you'll see we can actually drop a concealment upgrade and take rudder shift instead. And oh boy, this thing becomes basically impossible to hit for all but the fastest shells at close range. So it's pretty disgusting what this ship is capable of. You'll notice we haven't actually farmed up that much damage in this game. And that really comes down to the matchmaker these days. I think you guys have probably experienced this. Um, something that I've been a little bit frustrated with is the lack of capital ships. Meaning, the lack of ships that are spotted with big HP pools. Right? <laughs> There's not too many of them, at least in the NA queue a lot of the time. A little bit disappointing when I'm playing these ships where I'm wanting to just farm out the battleships, but uh, there's plenty of destroyers and uh, submarines it seems like these days unfortunately it leads to a lack of ships spotted on the map and it leads to the game feeling a little bit empty so that's where in a game like this where i notice that there's a few there's not enough battleships really there's not enough large capital ships then i push really hard right that's what i did at the start of this game and it certainly worked out for some decent damage so if you're looking for a really good, comfortable gunboat DD to play at mid to longer ranges, Kleber should be on your short list. I honestly find it more comfortable to play than a Marceau, just due to the shell velocity of these guns, and certainly far more comfortable than something like a Kaba, since it really does have the range that the Kaba seems to be lacking just a little bit of. You'll notice how uh, easily we're able to hit this Kitakaze, um, at least at the beginning. My aim suddenly just stops working. <laughs> I certainly would need to play this ship a little more to tune in that aim and hit this Kitakazi a little bit more consistently. But the shell velocity is so good, right? Seven second lead time for a destroyer at 12 kilometers is really, really solid and quite comfortable to do, assuming that you've played with the ship a little bit and are quite used to it. You'll notice we've also... <laughs> It's poor Massachusetts man. He started on the A flank and he ran away to the C flank and we got behind him. We caught up with him and got behind him. It's just ridiculous. It's a hilarious ship to play and it resulted in 100k that game, even a confederate. So we were definitely spreading out the damage properly in this one. So not always am I going to play this kind of annoying gunboat role, but it can be a ton of since this ship really is such a good long-range gunboat, you'll notice I'm totally giving up things like concealment. There's no heal or smoke here, so there's really not much need for Superintendent outside of the maybe bit of use you're going to get out of the extra reload booster as well as the extra speed boost. But given a few different upgrades, I think that one's very easy to skip out on. It's really, really nice to get this main battery and AA specialist and... Uh, get the range and the DPM up a little bit more. Adrenaline Rush is perfect on a ship like this, and so is Fearless Brawler, since you're always going to be spotted while firing, assuming you're not behind an island or in someone else's smokescreen. We're taking Survivability Expert as well as Last Stand and Preventive Maintenance. These things really are the things to keep us alive, whereas this is the damage dealing kind of upgrades. This ship really relies on its ability to deal damage. Of course, if you can, 
playing it as a second line destroyer, following in a Shimakaze or a Gearing or a Daring or a Holland or something with good concealment to contest a cap, and you're that second line DD that follows them in, suddenly it becomes very easy to win capture circles because this ship's firepower really, really wins DD gunfights very, very easily. So we're also running main battery modification three, giving us better reload at the cost of our turret traverse. As you noticed in, in this video, I was kind of struggling with keeping the turrets on target some of the time, given some of the maneuvering I had to do. So certainly something to keep in mind is that the turrets are slow to turn. And here again, I'm running concealment, but uh, steering gears mod two is pretty hilarious. I think giving both uh, builds a go and seeing which one works best for you would be a good option. Definitely taking propulsion mod over steering gears mod one, since we do rely on speed juking every once in a while and it's really important to uh, be able to accelerate back up to full speed after slowing down. I'm taking engine system mod 1, and even with that, the distortion can be a bit questionable. You see engine boost mod 1 here, and uh, that, of course, you can get for a bit of coal in the armory, and that allows this speed boost to last, like, 234 seconds, which is insane given an 85-second reload on it. So it's a very long-duration speed boost where... It's arguable that you could use four of the speed boost in the game and five reload boosters, but most of the time I don't get through that many speed boosts. And uh, most of the time I am looking to use all four of these main battery reload boosters. I consider it a bit of an issue or a problem in a match where I have reload boosters remaining at the end of the game. It basically means I left damage on the table. So that's why I'm trying to go through them as quickly as I can when it makes sense. So not using them instantly on cooldown, but also not wanting to leave too many of them in uh, not used at the end of the game. So Kleber is a great ship, honestly. I think it's a really solid DD. Its issues stem from its lack of AA and uh, potentially not good enough to really contest some of those ultimate cap contesters like Darren. But honestly, a really solid DD that can be a ton of fun to play. It's kind of an alternate, different playstyle, and for that, I really do like it. So let me know what you think in the comments down below, and thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.
Yeah, we're gonna get some torpedo hits. Oh my
の重要感を撃沈した Are you kidding me? He got torped. Absolutely fine. ナノマテリアルによる損傷箇所の再構築完了。これでなんとか。<笑> Watashi no Enzan Soshi ga, sono sentaku hitei shiteiru. 